It is a special edition of First and Now, the official BC Lions podcast. Uh, Matt Baker with you. Uh, no Nick Kowalski. Uh, he's down uh, doing a pretty exciting assignment down in Tacoma with Vernon Adams Jr., among others, that we'll be publishing on our channels later. Bit of a tease for you. But uh, we wanted to still do an episode this week and uh, really uh, a topic in the football world that is hit close to home for a lot of people, especially the three men joining us today. Uh, I have Farhan Lalji from TSN, uh, Louis Pasaglia and Sean Millington, two recognizable BC Lions legends. But before they became Lion legends, uh, cut their teeth uh, at the program at Simon Fraser. Uh, gentlemen, it's great to have you all aboard, first of all. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Yes, I uh, wish it was under better circumstances, obviously, but I think that uh, given the reaction to the SFU news of all uh, as we record this, I think it's been exactly one week. Um, I think there's definitely reason to be optimistic, but we'll, we'll kind of go around uh, the horn here for a few minutes and, and talk about the news, talk about the reaction. Uh, Farhan, um, judging by your Twitter account and, and your activity online, uh, this has been this has been your life for the last week or so. Just um, give people a sense of what it was like, first off, hearing the news and really the reaction you've gotten from a lot of other people uh, in your effort, efforts to get it uh, rectified. Yeah, you know, it, it has been an interesting uh, eight days, really. And, and I feel like I've changed jobs for eight days, you know, because I've just been working on this file along with covering the odd Canuck game. And, um you know, I, I found out the day before, the evening before, that this was where it was headed, and I was stunned. You know, I had talked to the athletic director at the university three weeks earlier, you know, and, and I knew that uh, the cancellation of the program was not going to be off the table uh, in that moment, just because until you get a firm schedule, I, all things are on the table. But I was assured that that wasn't the primary agenda. And um, when it came out like that, and to do it for the now, like not to let them play the 2023 season – um, I, I was shocked and disappointed and, and disgusted on so many levels, right? So, but you know, I'll, I'll be honest, Bake, since then I've been inspired because the amount of people from around, not just the SFU world, but from the football world across the country and even in the United States, the number of people that have reached out, you know, we, we've got a proud alumni at SFU, but they haven't always been an engaged alumni. And now you've got people from all walks of life that have said, how can I help? And they want to be involved, right? And, you know, I get calls from Abby Khan and Doug Brown in Winnipeg, and I get calls from from Toronto, from different media people and, and uh, people that are involved in the sport at a different level, but they just, they know the name Simon Fraser. They watched Louis Pasaglia, they watched Sean Millington, and they know just what a great history this program has. And for it to happen the way it did, and I think this is where the university miscalculated. They could have done it differently and might have had less backlash. There would have been some, but not like this. But the way they did it was not just heavy-handed, it was underhanded. And I think that is one of the reasons why the backlash has been just so swift and so severe. And the number of people that have wanted to get involved, honestly, Matt, as I said, it, it's been inspiring to work with this group of people and so many people that just want to be involved and help. Yeah, I was talking to George Chaika the morning this officially came down. Like you, Farhan, I was told the night before that this was going to happen. And um, we're trying to go through the list. You can't just pick out a few names, right? I mean, the Grey Cup Championship Lions teams, five of them, because the SFU program started in 1965, I believe, which was a year after the first Lions championship. But there was no less than 15 Lions just on the five Grey Cup teams. And plenty that... Uh, others that came and went along the way. Uh, Louis, you played at the program in, in the 70s. Uh, when you think of the history and, and what we could potentially be losing, uh, what goes through your mind? Uh, like our hand, uh, I was uh, caught off guard. Um, you just assumed uh, that the program would uh, continue on, and uh, especially in light of uh, where we are, where we were with the NCAA move, and uh, Okay, promising times were ahead, and uh, and you can see the caliber of, of play up at the university was 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 getting better, and there was a lot of uh, hard work uh, behind the scenes to uh, over the years to keep the program going. But uh, it was um, yeah. it was a shock in the sense of the way it was uh, put out that uh, the program wouldn't exist. But uh, for me, and probably. Most of the alumni that and the kids that can tell you that it's a great experience. 
uh, you know, being a student athlete at Simon Fraser was uh, one of the moments in my life that I, sh I cherished and uh, met a lot of great uh, men and women up there over the years. And uh, to see the program grow, go like this abruptly with questions behind how it was uh, um, discontinued is uh, li leaving a bitter taste in, in, in my mouth and probably a, obviously a lot of, of supporters of the Simon Fraser football pro programs uh, mouth too. And um, you know what, in doing so at this point in time, I, I think if we were, I don't know, my, my gut feeling was if you play through this year, you had, you know, six more months to contemplate what the next move was, but to do it such in such a way where you're, eliminating a program that's been around for 60 years and, and leaving the, the student ath athletes in the lurch like this, I don't know. It just doesn't smell right to me. Yeah, Sean, I mean, I was even scanning the 94 roster. I think uh, there was yourself. There was three Canadian starters on the defensive line. One of those was Doug Peterson, um, who would have been at SFU as well. I mean, uh, just your thoughts on, um, you know, how, Canadian development obviously is always key, but Simon Fraser pretty much led the charge, especially in the era you played. Definitely, Matt. You know, one of the big things that I took away from this whole situation is the number of you know high level draft picks that came from Simon Fraser. Like I think around the years that I was playing, Simon Fraser had the number one draft pick every year. Like the number one draft pick. I was a number one draft pick. The guy before me was number one draft pick over lead, and this guy was a number one draft pick. Like, obviously, there's a lot of talent being produced. And those were in years where Simon Fraser wasn't, you know, particularly competitive. You know, we were struggling to stay above 500. And the program, in some ways, you know, was having a lot of challenges. But people, you know, worked hard. People found a way to get around it. And, you know, for me, you know, it just is a testimony to how far things have come. Because when I left Simon Fraser, to be perfectly frank, my you know experience of the program wasn't great. I felt that I was successful in spite of the program in some ways, you know. And of course, it provided a vehicle that allowed me to excel and you know to have a lot of success moving forward. But there were a lot of other challenges that you know over time I've observed become resolved, which leads me to feel that just as you know we've overcome some of these big things that were present earlier on, we could have overcome what we're seeing right now, given the opportunity. And, you know, I'm a business guy at heart. And to me, at the end of the day, administrators are always about, you know, the, you know, the John A. McDonald's. And it's, it, this is about dollars. I don't let anybody tell you about anything else. The reason why they have pulled the plug right this second is about money. And I think in, in some ways they've done us a favor because if they had done it as Farhan has suggested in a more moderate fashion, in a more strategic fashion, the backlash wouldn't be so strong and people wouldn't be so motivated. And we wouldn't therefore have the opportunity that we do now, in my opinion, to set things on the right course and actually build a solid foundation financially and schedule-wise and you know, uh, league-wise that allows us to have a you know, good future once we get this all figured out. Before we, uh, before I take it back to you, Farhan, I mean, um... Will you two be involved if it comes to that? Like, will you get in a room? Will you listen? I mean, how much do you really want to be part of the solution here, Louis? I'll start with you. Well, I, I think, uh, speaking for myself, if I could help in whatever fashion, I I will. Um, you know, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of alumni, and based on the communication that I've had, there's a lot of alumni willing to uh, to step forward and, and, and do that. But... Uh, Again, it seems like it's not in our hands at the moment, and the way it was delivered puts us behind the eight ball. Uh, but we've got some great alumni, and with Farhan uh, leading the, the communications end of it, and Glenn Orris uh, from a legal perspective, there's still an avenue uh, ahead that we can uh, hold on to, and uh, hopefully something can happen. And uh, and hopefully the, the powers that be at the university uh, will listen to us and uh, see the benefits of the program. Now, if it's something that can't be rectified, then let us know. What is it that isn't keeping this program afloat? 
if it's financial, let us know if it's financial. But it seems like, you know, most of us are in the dark on the real reason why the program is not uh, viable anymore. John, anything else to add there? Yeah, I would kind of echo Louis' statement there and maybe add to it a little bit in the sense that I think we really need to drill down onto what the actual issue really is. What, what was the, you know, the obstacle that they felt they couldn't overcome? And 100%, you know, if there's anything that I can contribute, you know, again, as Lou said, speaking for myself, if there's anything, you know, if my name added to the list adds credibility or validity to a push that we need to make, or there's some way that I can contribute it that makes sense, hundred percent I'm in there to try and help because to me you know there's a whole generation of you know, new Simon players football players who aren't going to have the same opportunities that I did and that's just not right like it, it just isn't right and I don't know in what world as a Simon Fraser administrator you haven't moved every mountain and <laughs> turned over every rock in your attempt to do the best by the charges that you have before you yes we came to school to get an education but it also comes, you know, there's all sorts of education and the education you get on a sports field or an arena or any, something like that. Like what would the school be like if Simon Fraser decided, oh, we're just going to jettison all programs. Like it would be, it would be ridiculous. Their school would have to close. Like this is a vital part of the education process. And I for one will do everything that I can to make sure that future generations have access to it. Farhan, um, our colleague Jay Janauer at Global uh, spoke to, I think it was the managing director of Canada West uh, on the news earlier this week. And and that's kind of been the number one possible solution people say is uh, maybe beyond 2023. Is there a way to get into Canada West despite all the logistics that may have prevented it previously? But I mean, do you foresee that as a real possible solution here? Yeah, I really do. Uh, and, you know, and it, it just kind of baffles me that they said uh, it, it's an incredibly a complex process. And I know it's not easy, but boy, I, I think our alumni has made headway. Uh, you know, Jim Mullen and myself, and neither one of us are alumni, but both of us are sports information directors in the school. And and I, you know, graduated from the school, but it, uh, but not, you know, we didn't, other than playing against Sean back in high school, I, I can't say I played for SFU. Um, but uh, yeah, like it, it in just a small number of days, we've been able to knock on a number of doors and make a number of calls and push this down down the line towards a conclusion, right? So ultimately, the school itself is going to have to make an application. But I think we're setting things up for the door to be opened wide for the school to do that. And talking to officials both at Canada West and U Sports and talking to ADs around the country, you know, were there people at one time that were upset SFU was playing American football? Probably. Uh, were there people that, um, you know, just from a rivalry standpoint, they don't, you know, yeah, let's, uh, you know, we don't need them and we can get more recruits and all of that. But every one of those people realizes that the big picture is more football is good football. More programs is good for all of us. And if a program can get eliminated in this type of way, if I was every other coach in the, in the country, I'd be looking over my shoulder saying it could happen to me too. Right. So because of that, I think the the overwhelming response that we've received from the people that we've reached out to is, how can we help? Let's find a solution. And the fact that the university didn't explore this beyond a cursory phone call uh, literally four days before the announcement is really, really disappointing, right? And yeah, I'm sure they had some background conversations and things like that, but you have to push. You know, you go into a football game as a player quite often as an underdog. You don't give up right? Like you, the, the mountain could be really, really big. Like you look at SFU last year and they lost all their games. They lost one game in overtime and they lost all their games. And they go into the final game of the regular season and they had no reason to believe. And they came out and played an exceptional game and won. You know what I mean? And you, you, yeah. you teach that to your student athletes to keep trying, keep believing, keep chopping wood. And then what example did the administration set? Ah, it's a little bit complex and we're just not going to go there because there's no guarantee of a positive outcome. Okay. Well, if I'm a player, do I want to, do I want to go out there and play when there's no guarantee of a positive outcome? So that's the, the disappointing part, but I do believe there is a path to this. You know, we even had some, some conversation with the NAIA, which is the league that Millie played in and we, you know, the, the school was in 
And there's interest there, right? And yet it didn't get pursued right down to the end, which leads you to believe there was a bigger agenda. So we need to have our bigger agenda and we need to play a bigger game and play with a bigger stick and cause the kind of pressure that we have on the university. And I believe that they're feeling it. I, I, I know they're feeling it. So we're, we're going to continue to press. And the injunction that we've got coming tomorrow is not the, it's not the end. It's not the beginning, whether it's successful or not. Right. Because if it's successful, the school can fight it and, and there's still logistical hurdles and we got to push there. And if the school or if the injunction doesn't pass, we're still going to fight because we've got people like Amar Dolman in our corner and and Louis Pisagli and Sean Millington in our corner. And we've got you know, there's a, there's so many others, but, you know, business wise, CFL wise, CFLPA, alumni, student society, all of it. They all have a vested interest. So regardless of what happens with that injunction, we're going to keep fighting until we get the outcome we want here. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Amara Doman because he, of course, went public uh, a day or two after. I think it was two days after. And that obviously breathed new life into into the fight, into the story. And that's one of the first things when he bought the team was he, I think he reached out to Cavi, it was at UBC, and basically said, how can we help? And I, I was uh, talking to UBC just before this news came down about how we were going to roll out this year's Shrumble announcement. So really there was strides being made in terms of, you know, getting more eyes and getting more interest uh, in the game at the university level. And Farhan, when you add that up, that makes it even more upsetting what's gone down, right? Well, like take it beyond that too. I mean, this impacts the entire football ecosystem in Canada and especially in British Columbia. You know, I talked to Kurt Thornton, the coach of Lord Tweedsmere, and he just said, he goes, you know, SFU is accessible and affordable. So if you got a good football player in the Fraser Valley, they don't want to be going an hour and a half each way to UBC, Yeah, right? And that's no disrespect to their program. It's a great program. And thank you to people of the UBC alumni and, and in their football program that have reached out with their support, including Cavi Tour. So they they get it that, that we're all one family. But, um, you know, the tuition costs of going to SFU versus some other schools uh, and and just that ability to logistically – make it work if you're a high school football player in the Fraser Valley, of which there are many, that matters. And here's the other thing. You know what makes it harder for SFU than UBC uh, to, to raise money? UBC has a medical school. UBC has a law school. You know what SFU produces? Teachers. They've got a great education program. And you know what comes with teachers? Coaches. And the impact that SFU alumni have made on coaching in this province is massive. So for our football ecosystem to lose that, uh, for half the football opportunities taken away for kids in this province to play along with some other kids around the country, right? Like it affects everybody. You're a kid. I mean, I have a 14 year old son who wants to be a college football player and they dream, right? Like they dream about these opportunities and, and SFU quite often is a part of that and it gives them hope. So you hate to see that taken away on so many levels. So for me as a guy that coached for 32 years and knows the impact of having half of your university programs, think about that. Alberta has two, Saskatchewan has two. We could only have one with our population. It's crazy. It's not right. Yeah. Um, this has been great discussion, uh, fellas. Um, Louie and Sean, yeah, I'll give you each. Uh, yeah. Any any final words uh, you want to say here? Go ahead. I just hope that, uh, I just hope that they um, allow the process to go forward to uh, – to the possible conclusion, hopefully it's it's in the benefit of the student athlete up at Simon Fraser. The way it's been done so far has not allowed that, and hopefully with the where we are now, it'll give some answers and allow the program to uh, possibly uh, move forward. And uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Farhan for what he's doing, uh, Mark Bailey and the alumni, and what they're doing, and all the supporters across the country and all the alumni across the country that have, uh, that have played, supported the program, because as Farhan said, it's not over yet, and uh, we'll see what happens. And I would like to say, you know, to me, this is much like you know, two feuding parents, right? Like they're divorcing, you know, and then you're sitting before the judge, and the judge is trying to encourage everybody, do what's in the best interest of the kids. And in this case, the kids are the program. Right, like I'm sure the administration has their rationales for why they feel they needed to do this. But if they're really sitting down with integrity alongside of 
the groups that are trying to preserve this program, then we'll all sit there together and look at the problem and figure out a solution, as opposed to, well, we've made this decision, so it's immutable, and we're not going to back up because we're proud, and we know we do the right thing, and we're doing this in the best interest of the program and the school, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not, you know, that's not productive. That's not helpful for the group. That's not helpful for the program or anyone other than themselves. Let's, you know, collaboratively link arms, realize that we're all on the same team, administrators and alumni and the program and everybody who has an interest in this out outcome. And let's see how can we maximize benefit for all parties. I think that if we can get that done, then, you know, we're going to see some good outcomes. And regardless of whether the injunction goes through, you know, I think we're going to see football back up on the hill again. Very well said. Um, we appreciate you all uh, making time and uh, perhaps we'll do it again when we hopefully uh, get an get some positive news on this uh, down the road. Uh, the passion for all three of you uh, really rings true. I mean, uh, Louis was an NAIA uh, all-star. Sean, he mentioned it, the first overall pick. And uh, Farhan Lalji, many, many years ago, uh, before he developed into a broadcast star was the sports information director at the campus. So uh, bleed in the program colors uh, as you all are, and we appreciate you making time. Thank you. Thanks, Bakes. And guys, you know, I, when, when I think about those great cups involving Louie, especially the kick to beat Baltimore and, and Millie when he was outstanding Canadian and all of that, I mean, uh, SFU grads have brought so much to this sport in this country, uh, especially at the CFL level. And, uh, thank you guys for being an inspiration to so many. And Bakes, thanks for doing this. And thanks, Farhan. We appreciate you and all the work that you've put in over all the years and the good times we've shared together. So thank you as well. Keep fighting the good fight, boys. <laughs>